So now let's move on. Uh, we can do fancy stuff with puzzle checking. Uh, I'm going to actually now write the main game loop. Let's go here. Define main game loop. Now when I did this for school, I had a total puzzles amount, and when the puzzles were finished, you won the game. I'm not telling you how you're going to win your game, so basically now we're just going to call prompt. And here is where you would normally handle, like, here, handle if puzzles have been solved. Boss defeated, you know, explored everything, etc. But this will basically just keep the game prompting you over and over what do you want to do. Uh, this is basically important to actually running a game, otherwise, you know, game won't win. So let's see, we need a thing to actually define if the players won the game or not, though. So self.game over equals false. And now while. Oops, what happened there? While my player dot game over equals false, we're going to keep prompting them. If you don't do this, it actually won't work, so make sure you have this while loop to keep the game running forever. And here's actually a thing we can do. Instead of double equals false to check, we can just write in Python is false, so it just feels like a more natural sentence. While the game over is false, while the game over is not true, rather than using this double equals. That's a nice thing with Python. It's exclusive to it, so don't try to port it over to other languages or most other languages. And now let's actually handle stuff that lets you execute the game, uh, that will set up the game. Alright, so now for the last part of the video, we're going to handle how to actually execute the game and start playing our text RPG, or at least this very barebone skeleton of it. So, we have here our start game and our main game loop. At the very bottom, first thing we want to do, this is important to actually initializing the game, is we want to call title screen, just like this. Uh, it's not a def or anything, it's just being called like this. So when you run this .python file, this title screen will then call here, and this title screen here will then actually call here and bounce back and forth and actually handle all of the logic to a game and keep the game running. So we have title screen here, and now we want to define setup game so we can actually get our player initialized, you know, ask them what's your name, uh, what class are you, other stuff like that. So we could even add self.class equals that, or sorry, not class, that's a Python issue. Let's say uh, job. Really, sky's the limit. Uh, in a fantasy game, this is kind of how you do it. Maybe in a sci-fi game, you could handle things like biology, star sign, uh, home planet, other things like that. So here, we define setup game. We want to clear everything that we've typed in command prompt before by doing this. And now let's start asking the players questions about, you know, who are you, what's your job? So question one will be, uh, hello, what's your name? And note that I'm doing it like this, right? I'm defining question one to be this rather than just printing it. I'm going to show you why right now. So we want this text to come out not just all at once in these bricky sections, but we want it to type out naturally like in a video game, you know? You see it go across the screen as if the player is typing to you, talking to you. This is going to give the per player a really cool effect and kind of feeling like the game is really speaking to them. So we're going to do for character in question one. Sys.standard out write character. Standard out. Flush. Time.sleep 0.05. So this is going to be code that you just kind of have to assume it will work. But basically, this is saying for character in question one, for each character in this sentence, write it, flush, and then add a delay of um, 0 0.05 seconds, so maybe like 50 milliseconds or something, I think that is. And it'll kind of spell out like H-E-L-L-O, stuff like that. So then this question asks, what's your name? So we have to store, you know, the player name somewhere. So we'll collect the player's name with an input. And with my player, we will modify their name to be that player name that we collected. So I guess another way you could do this is just putting input 
here instead. But I think that it's just clear to do this if in case you ever want to add functionality or modify it more later. So we'll title this question um, name collecting. Maybe we want to repeat this for, let's see, uh, you know, your job. So hello, what's your, what role do you want to play? It's going to do the same text effect, player name input. And then let's say we don't want the person to be able to freely type whatever job they want. You know, you don't want them to say like, hey, I'm God, and then you beat the game. You want them to be like a warrior, a mage, something like that. So we'll collect their input. We'll uh, change this to be job. But we don't want to assign it just yet, right? We want to assign the job after we've checked for val like valid things, right? So let's make a list of uh, valid jobs. Warrior, mage, priest. Let's say there's only three jobs for now. So let's tell them that there's only a few roles. Added. You can play as a warrior, priest, or mage. So for character in question two, and then we'll print question two added right after that, and we'll speed it up. So let's only add a 10 millisecond delay so that way the person doesn't have to wait for all of that to spell out. So now we can take this and then valid jobs. If player job dot lower, make sure for case insensitivity is in valid jobs. Then we'll proceed with assigning it. And then we can uh, handle this with like, you know, a print statement like you are now a player job. And then don't forget to add a new line. Otherwise, we can, uh, you know, reprompt them or something. So else while player job dot lower not in valid jobs actually let's do it like this um, if it does that do that otherwise if it's not prompt the input over and over if it is restate that to the person. This may not be the cleanest code, but it works. It should be simple. So this is the job handling. Um, what other features do we have about the person? Health, MP, status effects, location, game over. So we define here as MP and status effects to be uh, zero. We probably want to change that now. So we can modify that here then. So these are the things that we want to modify, right? Actually, status effects will always start blank, but health and magic may be dependent on the type of character you're playing. So let's say if my player.job is a warrior, or if you are something else, we're going to handle each of those. So if you're a warrior, if you're a mage, and if you're a priest. Then we want to set your health and magic to different points. So for warrior, let's set health a little higher and magic a lot lower. Let's say you're a mage, let's self a lot lower magic a lot higher and if you're a priest let's give it a balance or something this is how you could set up custom stats in a role-playing game this is probably very crucial to you actually making a uh, 
good role playing game. So now that we have the player's name and job collected, let's um let's introduce them to the world of the game. So hello, what role do you want to play? I want to play a warrior. Um, what's your name? This. So we can have now an introduction. So let's collect, copy this. Introduction. Question four. Question three. Question three. Welcome. Player name. The, and then let's see what are you. Player job. It's like welcome, Brian the warrior. So now let's do maybe some, uh, you know, speech manipulation, stuff like that. Let's say you want it to feel sinister or happy. You can edit this time.sleep so that characters come out at different rates to really feel like it's talking to you. So welcome, speech one, speech two. I'll make this pretty brief compared to my actual example that I made before. But speech one could be like, you know, um, Welcome to this fantasy world. I hope it greets you well. Just make sure you don't get too lost. <laughs> This should kind of feel like, you know, upbeat. Welcome to this fantasy world, hope it greets you well, and then it gets a little more ominous. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our four character stuff again. And we're going to use this four times. Oops. There we go. So for character in speech one. Speech two, speech three, and speech four. We're gonna write it, you know, pretty fast, pretty fast, a bit slower, and a lot slower for the ominous he he he. And you'll see how this effect looks in the actual conclusion of this. So now we can call system clear again and print a bunch of hashtags let's start now add some more spacing to make it equal and there we go now that the game's starting we can call main game loop and the game should run so in the next part, we'll actually launch the game, check it out, make sure everything works, fix bugs if there are anything, and stay tuned.